everybody. Goodness me, welcome back to my studio and a very worry warm welcome to you. If it's your first time here and you've only just found me, hello, my name is Emma. I'm a textile artist and I have the great delight to live in the Lake District here in Cumbria in the UK and I live and look out on, on the green, green rolling hills out of my window every day and I just love being here with you guys because being here with you on this YouTube channel has transformed my life. It's changed what I do, it's changed how I do it. I'm just delighted that you're all here with me on this journey of exploration. We're playing around with fabrics and thread and stitch and just seeing what comes. There's no, there's never any outcome that I require. It's just simply come and join me and we'll play. And if that gets you playing with your fabrics and having a, you know, just a nice time, being creative, then that's fantastic. I know that I've had a lovely week off. I don't know whether what you got up to during this last week. It seems like a hundred years since I was here sitting in front of my camera and chatting to you all. Goodness me, I don't know where the time has gone or what I've actually done. I think, oh yes, I know, I had a paintbrush in my hand for most of the week. I've been painting a room with a very nice white paint. So, But it's such a meditative thing, isn't it? Decorating, you know, I was just slapping the paint on the wall. No thought, something nice to listen to on my, on my computer or the radio or whatever. In my own little world, just putting paint on the wall and making the house look much nicer than it was before. So that's been very nice. And the weather in the meantime, everything in the garden is just springing up. All the buds are coming out, all the trees are coming out. Um, the chickens and the geese are just running around laying eggs everywhere. <laughs> we, get, we get lovely little chicken eggs, which are kind of normal size. And then we get the goose eggs, which are whoppers. They're really huge. And you just wonder how the poor geese actually managed to lay them. But um, yeah, we have two lovely geese and they're, they're girls and they're very beautiful and they're good fun to have around. You might, sometimes you'll hear them honking on my, on, my, uh, on my films that I make. Sometimes we get chickens and sometimes we get geese. Very occasionally we might get a donkey passing by the window and that's also very lovely. So as I say, I've just had this very tranquil week. It's been very nice. It's been nice to just stop everything and just play around and do, do other things for a week. You know, off the, off the, it's not a treadmill, but you know, you do get in a way, don't you? You get in a rut with doing things sometimes. It's good just to step outside of that for a bit. And it's just been very relaxing. And I've come back, I'm fresh and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get some more fabrics out and see what's going to come. And the last few pieces that I've been making have been very random. I'm sure if you've been here with me, you've been going, what on earth is she going to turn up with next? And the answer is I never really know. This is this is what it's all about. I've shifted from um, being an artist who absolutely knows what the outcome's going to be. Years ago, I would have just said, oh, I'm making such and such, and this is how I'm going to make it. And um, especially, I think, I suppose that came from student days, really, and you had to sort of, you had to work to an, um, a set thing, and you had to produce work that was, it was measured, and every step had to be shown, and... Whereas now I just get my fabrics out and I play and I'm inspired sometimes by things I've seen around. It's almost like I get inspiration from everything that's around me, but it's not always an obvious inspiration. Sometimes it's just something inside me that kind of wants to come out. And I just suggest to you that, you know, just go out with your eyes open. There's all sorts of things out there, whether you live in a town or in the countryside. There's always things out there just to inspire you. Sometimes it's surprising what comes out when you just let go, have a play and see what happens. So so today I think the best thing for me to do is go into my stash of fabrics which is in the corner of this room. It's supposed to be a little room off my main room. It was supposed to actually be a tiny kitchen at some point in time but really it's just full of my fabrics. And I have, I did have a big clear out about two years ago. Two years ago I had a massive clear out but I've still got plenty and it'll keep me going. And it means I've got plenty to show you and hopefully get you inspired. So I think let's go get some fabrics out and we'll get started. Okay, so here we go. We've got a completely blank canvas here, if you like. A blank page, ready to start. Pins and scissors. And what do I need? Well, I think the first thing I need is some colour. And the first colour that came out of the boxes today, ladies and gentlemen, was this beautiful blue. For no good reason, I just went to my stash and this is what came out. This was a beautiful night dress, as you can see, it's got a lovely uh, lingerie, pretty little top here. Um, and it hasn't well and truly been chopped into on various occasions, you can see by the striggly bits. So this is rather lovely, uh, it's a very strong dominant colour and interestingly the other colour that, that was sort of um, 
shouting at me if you like from the boxes was this pink again I don't know what it's been oh it's got something with elasticated waist here how lovely oh no it's got a little yeah it's a top it's been a shirt it's been a top there you go look there's the sleeve I've obviously had a good go at that one at some point it's got a nice again a nice sort of sheeny shine to it so to go with that, okay, the next colour that came out, da, drum roll please, was this gorgeous screen, which happened to be, this was a fantastic set of curtains that I bought in a charity shop, absolutely masses of fabric, plus lining, plus curtain tapes, and it's been one of my most useful greens. If you've been watching for a while, you will have seen this green before. So now, the next, the next colour, to join this happy little band. Are you ready for it? Have you got your sunglasses on? This is what I'm asking because it's this beautiful sunny yellow. Again, it's been well used on various things. You might have seen me making daffodils with this last year actually. I don't have that many yellows because yellow has not been a big strong thing in my colour palette but it is coming out more and more. I'm noticing I am using it but I'm using it in rather different ways. So to use it for daffodils is kind of quite an obvious way to use it but to use it with this colour combination, well, I don't know. So I think what I need to go with this is something, I don't know, something with this, something with that, I don't know. The box that came out next I will show you. I'll just pop these to one side for a moment and we're just going to have a little look through this box here. This is what I do. Okay, so I'll go through the box. This is my blue, one of my blue boxes. I have several blue boxes, I'll be honest. Um, I've got kind of this, what I call lightish, lightish turquoises. I also have a dark one and I've got a very lovely kind of pale blue one. So what I do is I just go through all of this lot and I go, hmm, what am I feeling? I want to use some of that. I feel as I'd like something textured. Ooh, hang on, what's this? Now then, that's got, that's got, ooh, that's got a kind of a feeling that might go with that. It's kind of got a darkish, let's have that one out. That's nice and dark and mysterious. I feel as though we need to anchor these colours. Let's anchor them with something. And I would like some texture. So I'm just wondering whether I put this in as well. Not sure how we're going to use it, but I think that would go quite nicely because it picks up that blue. It's a little lovely strand of gold there. Let's put that out. Um, I think, I don't think there's anything else in here that's particularly, I think that's too kind of pale. I don't want to, if I put that and that together, you see, that goes quite nicely, but I don't think that's the right turquoise to hold its own. It's got to hold its own in this colour mix. So I think that's it. So I'm going to put this blue one away. It's like being in a sweetie shop. I just get my boxes out and I start pulling the fabrics out. And they're full of happy memories, these boxes. So many different things I've made down the years from some of these fabrics. All kinds of things have come out of these boxes. So let's put that to one side. So now let's put these together. So what we're going to do, we're going to do it like this. We're going to put together the four that I had to start with, are these four. Okay, let's just jiggle them around a bit. And we'll just pop these in the mix. And don't ask me why, but I feel as though that's going to work somehow. I think that and that are quite nice because they're quite dominant and strong. And they're strong with this strong pink and strong yellow. The green is slightly softer and that just seems to pick up and go with those. So as I've got no idea where I'm going with this lot, it's quite intriguing really to pull out of all these all these colours. In the past I would have simply pulled out a box of blues and gone off happily to make a seascape or something um, or picked out one of my landscape boxes but it seems as though all bets are off at the moment and it's just letting these fabrics tell me what we're going to do next with them. So I'm taking these big pieces of fabric, the way I seem to be working at the moment is to take large pieces of fabric and cut them into little pieces and then I'm using my embellisher to kind of piece it all back together again. 
and it's I feel as if it's a bit like painting with a brush in that you're taking a brush and you're making a brush stroke and you're putting down a bit of colour and then you're perhaps putting another piece of colour next to it, you know, as you're building up your picture. Um, and it's such a lovely relaxing thing to do. I'm kind of, I'm just letting go of control. I'm letting the fabrics show me where they want to go. They've already shown me which ones to choose, which is quite fun. And I'm finding it very relaxing and very meditative and certainly cutting them up into little pieces with no thought in my head really, other than just snip, snip, snip. Very, very relaxing. No plan. I'm just allowing something to evolve and come out and change. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to go with the flow. And I'm finding actually more and more in my life this is what I'm doing. I watched um, a really interesting YouTube um, recently that um, there was a chap on it who's actually a pagan and he was talking about all sorts of things but amongst what he talked about was so he celebrates you know all the all the pagan festivals and Beltane and all these different things and celebrates nature obviously um, and he was talking about drifting allowing some drift in your life so that Yes, obviously we all have, you know, things we have to do and things we have to plan a certain, to a certain extent. You know, if you need to make an appointment to see somebody, you need to make an appointment, don't you? Or if you need to meet somebody at a particular time for, for something, a meeting, yes. But what about if we just allowed a little bit of drift in? So I feel as though this is kind of part of my drifting, is that I'm not planning anything. I'm just letting this process take me on a journey. And I'm doing it more and more in my life. As I say, I'm, I'm getting up in the morning and I'm very privileged because I can do this. But I think there's possibilities for all of us to do this a little bit in our lives. Um, which is just allowing a little bit of slack in the system. Having Maybe have an afternoon where you don't plan to do anything in particular. Where you just drift and you say, well, what if I did just lie on the sofa and read my book for half an hour? You know, the dishes still need doing, but maybe do them after you've had your half an hour lolling on the sofa, pleasing yourself and having a nice relaxation. Um, and maybe I think it's about softening. I think for so long we have thought we're in control of everything. And it's quite apparent looking across the planet at the moment, isn't it? Really, we're not in control of anything. <laughs> and actually, I don't really want to be in control of everything. I'm very happy just to let... A bit of slack come in, a bit of drifting, a bit of softening and so there's much less tension in my life these days. And honestly if something doesn't get done, say in the house, if the dishes don't get done at night, well jolly well, heck is like, I'll do them in the morning. I'll put them into soak in the sink and they'll get done in the morning, which is a revelation for me, I have to tell you. I used to be one who couldn't bear to go to bed without leaving dirty dishes in the sink. It seemed the most outrageous thing to do. But I think I'm just, you know, reveling in this new way of, new way of being. And as I say, it obviously depends what you've got going on in your life. That might be difficult to do, but I think, you know, even if it's 10 minutes, go and stand outside and just look at a tree for 10 minutes. Just go and breathe the air. You don't have to go on a major walk. You don't have to plan it all and go on a major walk. You can just step outside your door. Sometimes I just stand at the open window. If it's a nice day, I'll just stand at the open window and look out. Anyway, so I'll keep cutting these bits of fabric. <laughs> this, is my, this is my drifting relaxation, slightly moving in a direction, but I don't know where I'm going. So I'll just keep cutting these until we've got sufficient to start off. So we'll just do some more snipping, I think, until we get ready for the next fun bit. I love this stuff. This stuff has been so useful to me. If anybody recognises, it's one of those shrugs that you wear, that ladies, ladies generally wear them. Uh, I don't think it's something that men often wear, I'll be honest. Um, and they're just the most beautiful knitted fabric and you can use it for all kinds of different things. It adds a lovely texture to things. I'm not going to leave that long like that. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with that bit, so I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to start a new box off. And, um, 
Yeah, not 100% sure about that one, so I think I'm going to come cut this one up instead. Oh, this is very pretty. This is very pretty. This is this has got a beautiful frill down it. And it's lovely because it's got these very dark, beautiful sea colours. Really rich colours. And I love the way it's been dyed so that it's got these... The blending of the colour is already there for us, really. And then the little white patches. I mean, what nicer way to spend your day? Or if you haven't got all day, spend half an hour doing this. Get your fabrics out. Just get your fabrics out and look at them. If you haven't got, if you've only got five minutes, put your fabrics out somewhere where you can see them, and just look at them and enjoy them and appreciate them. You know, put them out in a nice basket in your living room, and every time you go past, you'll go, "Oh, I love those fabrics. I love those colours." Okay, right, I'll keep doing this until I feel I've got enough. Okay, so um, I haven't cut a lot to start with because I'm not quite sure how much of each one I'm going to need, but I've just cut enough to get us going and I'll cut more as I need them. As I say, I haven't decided quite what's happening with this one, so that's just going to sit there as it is, but I've cut all these other pieces up and I think they look quite nice together. So I think the next thing is to get a base done that I'm going to embellish onto and I need to kind of feel into what shape, what size that that is going to be and at this now moment, right now, I'm not sure what it is. So I'm just going to go off and have a little think and I'll come back and show you it when we've decided on that. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut myself a piece of my, one of my favourite bases to use for embellishing at the moment seems to be my curtain interlining. This is cotton curtain interlining. It's fairly cheap to buy, which is why I use it. It's very flexible. It gives a slightly quilted effect, depending on how much stitching you do. But obviously, it's, it's not very thick. It's quite a quite a thin thing, but it's a very useful backing. You don't have to use this if you're going to use an embellisher. You can use whatever you've got. If you've got calico or cotton or you know, virtually anything, you can use as a base. I've used old blankets in the past. Um, and you can just, you know, use what you've got kicking about the place. Don't rush out and buy things that you don't need. I just like to use this because it adds a bit of, a little bit of depth to the stitching, a little bit of thickness to the to the finished piece. So I thought I'd just measure this and tell you how big it is. It's about 24 inches. If you're working in old money in the UK, if you else around the world, you might use a different. Um, What's the word? I can't even think of the word. Anyway, seven, about 17. Ooh, I think I've, I've, I'm, it's a very wonky piece, this. Please don't, please don't judge me. It's quite wonky here. So it's about 24 by 17 inches. So that's what I'm starting off with. I'm allowing, I always cut my stuff a little bit bigger than I think I might need because um, then it allows, ooh, it's got all tangled. It allows for a bit of shrinkage because when you embellish, it is likely to pull in your back fabric as well as your front fabric. You know, you, you do get, it does pull in. Okay, so I will take this over to my embellishing machine with my lovely little boxes of fabric and we will just jolly well get started and see what's going to happen. I'm so excited. I hope you are too.